Namaste. Welcome. The mala is more than a necklace. It's a guide. It's a companion. It aids us in the practice of pranayama and meditation. The mala is made up of 108 beads, and it's a special number. It adds to nine. The number nine cannot be broken, so whatever number you multiply, the nine will always add up to nine. And there's one herald bead at the top we call the meru. Yeah. The 108 beads represent our never-ending potential for growth, both as a practitioner and as a person. And it is believed that all energies we accumulate, yeah, or we produce in the practice while using the mala, yeah, is stored in the meru, the herald bead. Various seeds could be utilized to produce the mala, but my favorite is the rudraksha bead. So let me come closer so I can show you. Yeah. There's really something special about the rudraksha. It's not perfectly smooth. Yeah. There are like gentle spikes on it. And that's the reason why I love using the rudraksha. Yeah. It stimulates the nerves of the fingers and it has this calming effect to the brain. So how do we use the mala? Yeah, it's simple. Yeah. So we drape the mala over our middle finger and we point our index finger away. So we do not allow the index finger to touch the mala. Rather, we're using the thumb in rolling the mala towards our direction. So we start at the very first bead next to the meru. Yeah, the meru is the independent bead at the middle, yeah, the center, right? This one, yeah, if you can see, yeah, there's this single bead at the bottom, so that's the meru. So we start at that bead directly next to it. Yeah. So one bead is um, one repetition of the technique, for example, you're chanting. So you're going to hold that first bead using your thumb and then you meditate. You, you do your chant or you do your pranayama. And you use your thumb yeah, to move up to the next. And then you just carry on. Yeah. And then once you finish, for example, the entire yeah, 108 beads, which is if you chant the Om would take about 20 to 30 minutes, depending on yeah, the length of your chant. Yeah. So if, for example, you want to do another round, we do not cross over the meru. Yeah. Rather, we flip the mala over. So we start from that last bead, from the previous round or set. And then, yeah, you do the same. Yeah. So it's good to be rubbing the fingers yeah, against the, the rudraksha. I do this, especially if I do pranayama, if I do my kumbhaka, for example, and adishodana, so one breath in, and while I'm holding the breath inside, yeah, I roll, yeah, the rudraksha yeah, against the bone of my uh, middle finger like that and then the fleshy part of my thumb yeah, lightly presses against it and then it's relaxing and yeah, this technique of rolling it yeah, back and forth yeah so even if you're chanting you know you might do that oh. Like that. Yeah. You may even just try and then roll it like this. Yeah. 
whether, for example, you are not doing your pranayama or meditation, and just to feel it, it's relaxing too. That one. All right, so, that like um, small sides bead. This one is, I think, the smallest one, and the medium ones. Yeah. If you're just starting with your practice, the medium one might be um, easier to manage. Yeah. If you have your big hands or big fingers, you might use the medium ones or even the bigger beads. Um, so it's easy to manage. And there are like also individually knotted uh, beads, which is so good. Yeah. Because this one, yeah, is just um yeah, string together. Yeah, there are no individual knots in between the beads. Yeah. And this one um they're individually knotted. Yeah, so there are like knots, small knots between each bead. Good. So that's how we use it. Yeah. So we just use our thumbs in working through yeah, our practice. You do not have to do the whole the entire one hundred eight, maybe in the morning, a quarter, which is twenty seven. Yeah, it won't take uh, long, you know, what's five minutes? Then maybe lunchtime or your morning tea. Yeah, do another quarter in the afternoon, do another quarter and the rest of it at night. Yeah, so five, ten minutes, yeah, won't hurt. Yeah. And I tell you, it has this instantaneous, yeah, relaxing effect to the brain. You might just even do your breath awareness using the mala. Yeah. Each breath yeah, is one beat. Yeah, and you won't notice it. Yeah, because the experience is so enjoyable. Yeah, you will keep doing it. Well, I said after the practice, wear the mala around your neck. Yeah, and then let it touch your skin. Yeah, so inside your shirt or your clothing. Yeah, there's something comforting about it. If the body is hot, if the weather is hot, it's actually cooling. Yeah, if the weather is cold, it's actually warm to the feel. Yeah, so it, there's this uh, energetic, uh, I say, effect. Yeah, when we keep our malas close to our skin. If you're not wearing it yeah, around your neck, you may place it on your altar, or a place yeah close or sacred to you, so you can easily yeah get it when you want to practice. Good. So if you have one at home, yeah, if you've given. Yeah, Amala as a gift. So use it. Yeah. This coming year may be an inspiring yeah, start for you. And let me know. I might be able to assist you start your meditation practice. Thank you and have a blessed new year. And see you next time. Take care. Bye. Namaste.